Top load for the night comes from poet and writer Grace Palmer. It's a clever poem inspired by Henry Pooley's two-tailed mermaids on the gates of the old sailor's home in Liverpool One. And it is titled The Mermaid Waits at the Sailor's Home Gates, Liverpool One. Take it away, Grace. The mermaid waits at the sailor's home gates, Liverpool One. She's groomed and gilded on green steel ropes. Two tails grasp the gates. Above her, the liver bird. Below her, smokers and phone strokers rest on the bench. Her eyes are set to the sea. She's sore. They've rubbed the gilt off her nipples. But she's not waiting to be rescued, discovered, doesn't want to kiss or entrap. One night she wait trains, flips upside down and flexes her spine. One night she untwines her tails to explore her fishiness, slips off her climbing frame, slithers to foot asylum to snaffle trainers, throws chips to the gulls, heads to the rope walks, flashes her scales, cradles the drunks and whistles to the crowd. One night she blinks away salt crust tears, embraces the stink of iodine steals an e-scooter under blotted clouds and aluminium moon. She whizzes towards sea glitter to reach the clattering waves of the Mersey and dives into the lapping fury, swims to a sandbank where she basks and slaps her tail, leaving only a shimmer in a lover's eye. Upload. BBC. We just heard a poem titled The Mermaid Waits at the Sailor's Home Gates, Liverpool One. Uh, I'm joined by this week's uploader, the writer of that poem, Grace Palmer. Welcome to the Upload Show, Grace. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. It's great to have you on. Thank you very much for, for such a great poem, such a lovely poem. For anyone who just heard that and, um, and liked the sound of it, why don't you tell us a bit about it and why did, why did you decide to write a poem on the mermaid down at the um, Sailor's Home Gate? Well, I'm sort of a real newbie to Liverpool and I'm just really enjoying being in your, you know, fabulous city. Uh, and I've been going around looking at all the culture that you have. It's such a sort of rich and varied place. And I came across this, um, what I didn't really know what it was, this sort of big bench at the sort of start of Liverpool One. Um, beautiful sort of green, uh, what looked like a climbing frame almost, and these beautiful sort of little mermaids, you know, there was about six of them with the two liver birds on top. And I just sort of had this thought, and I thought, well, as a mermaid, what happens at night? Does a mermaid sort of escape? And so that sort of led into writing this poem. And I sort of incorporated into the poem lots of things about, um, you know, Liverpool. Um, so going out at night and all the things that I'd seen and observed about the Liverpool scene, really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the nightlife. Um, and so on the shops and so on. and also the Mersey, which is fabulous. Well, the mermaid, she had a proper tour of the city, that's for sure. Had a little ride on the yeah. e-scooters. The only thing she didn't do yeah, is get a, get exactly. a ticket to the match. <laughs> I think that was it. I missed that bit out, actually. Oh uh, yeah, I missed a trip. Didn't <laughs> maybe I? that can be maybe that can be next week's trip. Next week's trip, she can go and see the match. Yeah. <laughs> um. So tell us a bit about yourself, then, Grace, because not everybody walks by those mermaids and sees them and thinks poetry. So I'm assuming you must have some sort of a poetry background. Yeah, I suppose. I've always written, um, started off writing poetry um, sort of from a very young age and I got a degree in creative writing and then I've written a couple of novels. Um, I did an MA in creative writing about four or five years ago now and since then I've been writing a lot of flash fiction but also poetry and I think Liverpool is a place that lends itself to poetry so when I look around and observe things I, I think in terms of the images that, that, that I see around me. Yeah. Very um, inspiring place. You mentioned there that you're a visitor to the city. Like myself, I've although I am, um, they can't get rid of me. I've been here too long now. They're stuck with me now. <laughs> but um, what brought you here to the city? Well, it's a sort of a lockdown story, actually. Um, I've lived for, what, 35 years in Bristol. Um, mm -hmm. Bristol's really my home. And then during lockdown, I just thought, I actually really need to get out of the city and change my life completely. Um, so I bought a house in Somerset, but I had to move out of my place in Bristol mm -hmm. and so I'm up here staying with friends over the summer while my stuff is in storage and I'm waiting for that transaction to go through but actually I've fallen in love with your city mm -hmm. um, it's easily it, done it's easily yeah, done yeah yeah absolutely same as I think so many people who aren't from the city have got the same story they came here for a short limited amount of time ended up just falling in love with the places and now now the Scousers are stuck with us now you mentioned there that you do do a bit of writing as well outside and um, not a couple of novels you said you've written as well. Are these published novels or stuff that you've done for yourself? Um, 
the novels that you know one day I hope to get published mm -hmm. um so I'm sort of still chasing that agent um and so on I've had a lot of quite a bit of flash fiction published flash fiction of very short stories um I've also had poetry published in in sort of literary magazines and so on so it's about building up your portfolio as a writer um and you know getting pieces out there and then working on on these bigger projects so yeah I'm a regular performer down in Bristol I also support other writers because I teach creative writing as well as that, I run something called Novel Nights, which supports writers down in the southwest region and online as well. Okay, and yeah. um, well, you've got a, a couple more pieces for us, so um, yeah, I'd love to hear another one. I'm sure our listeners would love to hear one too. So I'll I'll let you take it away, Grace. Okay, so this one is a poem that I wrote about lockdown experience. My mum's in a care home at the moment and has dementia, and uh, it's called Mime Through FaceTime. So it's about that experience of actually not being able to connect properly. Mime through FaceTime. We meet in the 1940s in a story before I was born. But the harvest dance, the hill over Marchington Woodlands, this black sleet ice, the humber slewed right into the ditch. The stars were silver buttons, the thick snow falling. And my dad went on foot to fetch the horses to pull her out. So um, tell us a bit of context about that one then. When, when, and, when and what got the inspiration for that one going? Well, you know, I, I sort of collect family stories. Um, and my mum particularly had all these old family stories. And, and so one of her favourite stories was before when she was courting. So this was sort of in the late, late 40s. And um, they were going to a harvest dance, basically. And um, there was a problem. Uh, there's a very steep hill. This all took place near Utoxter in Staffordshire. This, this, this is where this was. And a very steep hill. And uh, on the way back, the car just went off the road. I don't suppose brakes were very good in those days. And so he had to walk a long, long way to, to get the horses to kind of, you know, fix the problem, um, go back to, to my mum's home and, and, and do that. He was a farmer. Um, and so that's always sort of been a, a, a bit of a thing that she, she sort of remembers. So actually her memory of 1940s are probably sort of stronger than they are now today. So the idea of just like pulling her out of that situation and pulling her back to a place where we can actually talk about things that where we have this you know, memory, shared memory, is what I wanted to talk about. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you are part of a few poetry nights yourself. You host a few um, especially when you were down in Bristol, a couple online as well. Have you, I suppose this last year probably hasn't been the greatest opportunity to be able to get out and about, but since we've come out of lockdown or the few spaces that we've had, have you been able to enjoy any of um, Merseyside's poetry scene? Because in the last couple of years, the poetry scene has really grown here. Yeah, well, um, I got in touch with um, Live of Bards was the first one that I've sort of uh, run into. So I read for them at one of their monthly events. In fact, I went along to their first live event, which I've held for a long time, which was in Mar Boyles, which was, it was it was great actually to, you know, to sort of um, hear other poets. And it's mm -hmm. interesting to sort of contrast kind of what's happening in Liverpool with what's happening in Bristol, because it's, it's, it seems like quite a different, and so much kind of the musicality, I think, of Liverpool poets is what I was sort of really uh, noticed for any of our listeners who might want to hear some more of the poetry that you do or i know you mentioned there that you do classes online as well maybe some would like to come and join see what it's all about where can people go to keep tabs on what's happening with you grace my twitter handle is word poppy and i've got a website which is gracepalmer.org because i i run flash fiction and um short story um classes from time to time and um, i also work with a joy club and the Joy Club is an amazing organisation. It's for sort of older, retired people. Uh, and I run a creative writing class for them, which is all online. And it's great. The, the stories coming out of there, I really, I really enjoy working with that group of people. Okay. And that was called Joy Club, did you say? Yeah, the Joy Club. The Joy Club. All righty. Yeah. Um, Grace, so thank you so much for, for uploading to the Uploader. Absolutely loving uh, the poetry uploads we're getting lately. Uh, thank you so much for the first poem and the second one. But you're going to grace us with the last one do you see what i did there <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 well you know now you've got the four graces in the city haven't you oh there we go you had to upstage me <laughs> okay so this is about finding love in later life and it's called rum and coco at our age baggage allowance is generous there's your kids my kids but it's your ex's stuff that wearies me and poisons you your luggage needs unpacking. 
There's the how and then the why and where, the house, the death, divorce, guilt, shame. And look, we have to get through customs. Just drop the bitterness, draw the sting that festers, that makes you unable to commit to our new adventure. Let's leave them standing, chase the skies, escape with a cabin bag packed tight with hope. But then you sigh and stroke my arm and whisper, I, and I know you too are scared that this too could fail. So let's not hold tight. We shuffle, wait and watch, check our safety doors are shut. And in the hot pinched air of our flight, let's drink the rum and take care not to spill the cocoa. Upload. Get yourself on the BBC with Jermaine Foster on BBC Radio Merseyside.